Well, good afternoon, um, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, as a visitor uh, and as an outsider to India, I wanted to uh, extend our sympathies for what happened here on Wednesday uh, and the sad events. Uh, and I just think it's wonderful that we're all here today uh, carrying on as normal, which I think is, is absolutely the right thing uh, to do. Um, this presentation is uh, about improving your social life. So I hope it works for, for, for all of you in this room uh, spectacularly well. And I wanted to start off by um, taking you through an experience that we had ourselves as PhD as a company uh, when we experienced the true power uh, of social. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, earlier this year in February, February the 18th, uh, it was PhD's 21st birthday, and we thought we ought to mark that, we ought to celebrate it. Uh, PhD was started in London back in 1990. Uh, so we did various different things. We did a, a major charity initiative, which was, was great. But one of the things that we did was we, uh, we produced a film, um, which was sent out to, uh, to all our employees, and it was used for conferences, and it was shown to clients. Uh, and it was called uh, We Are the Future. Uh, and it was designed to stimulate debate um, about the uh, future uh, of marketing and media. So I'm just going to show that to you uh, first of all. Can you run the first video, please? If you work in marketing, you better start upping your game. Because you haven't seen anything like us yet. In just 10 years from now, we'll be buying and influencing buying in ways that will confound you. We won't just watch your ads, we'll expect smart, tailored content based on our social graphs. Tailored? For me. 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 And me. We want to interact with it as we watch it. Not just with touch, but with voice. With gesture. With intent. You better embed everything that is featured with additional information. Social APIs and e-commerce functionality. And we mean everything. 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 The car, the skirt, the hotel, the app. Because we expect to double tap on anything to get more information. Don't worry. You'll offset the cost by on-selling any leads to those data aggregator type companies. We'll spread it through our networks and co-create with you. And when we do buy, there are normally more of us than there are of you. We can change your business in one trade as long as the deal is on. Augmented reality will be the new reality. AR apps will almost function like special skills to help us navigate reality more effectively. You wait and see what the iPhone of 2021 looks like. The clue is in the name. And you better get used to paying us. Our browsing, influencing and purchasing data will make some of us pretty rich. But don't overstep the mark, otherwise we'll block you. Mass blocks kill brands overnight and keep you up all night. So if you work in marketing, you better start up in your game. Because you haven't seen anything like us yet. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you liked it because not everybody did, as we'll go on to see in a moment. Um, this was, of course, posted on YouTube, uh, inevitably. Um, and I have to say, we had not anticipated or uh, indeed prepared uh, for the reaction that it got. Uh, and we hadn't put any um, social infrastructure uh, in place to manage it, uh, which of course is something we always advise our clients to do, but we don't take the advice ourselves. Uh, to date, that video has now had uh, nearly 190,000 views uh, on YouTube. And most of the feedback, most of the comments, I think about 97% of the comments are negative. Uh, and most of the comments are actually about the actors uh, in, in the film. Um, it's been tweeted and blogged about extensively. And really what happened with it was that a, a, a trade um, piece of work, uh, something targeted at, at our own staff and clients and the, the advertising community, uh, entered the wider world. Um, and within four days, we really started to experience for ourselves social uh, contagion. And one of our uh, junior members of staff in the marketing area in London made this worse by deleting some of the um, more negative uh, and more sort of uh, offensive um, comments uh, on, the, uh, on, on, on the sort of uh, on the YouTube page and on, and on Facebook. 
Uh, and I noticed uh, with interest uh, just the other day that, as you, you may be aware, Rupert Murdoch and News International are having a, a few issues at the moment in the UK, uh, to say the least. And one of the things that they did was to delete some of the more negative comments from The Sun and the News of the World uh, websites, uh, their, their response sites. Um, and so one piece of advice, if you, if you were ever in that situation, don't start deleting comments off your, your site because you get an incredibly negative uh, uh, reaction to that. Um, so I said, that, you know, the, the focus in the response was really about attacking the actors rather than the, the thoughts in the film or the ideas uh, in the film. Um, we then, uh, after a couple of days, we brought in our social marketing team, uh, but we did it as the contagion spread, uh, not before. So, uh, in essence, uh, what we achieved was a lot of debate uh, and provocation um, on a far greater scale than expected, and in, it has to be said in not quite the way that we anticipated. So we learned some very big lessons uh, about this very, very quickly, but the key lesson was, was confirmation firsthand of the incredible power uh, of social media something we knew about, but then really um, came to feel for ourselves. Um, so what we decided to do was to really focus on what happens uh, when brands generate positive uh, contagion. What is the potential payback of getting it right? So what we've done with this presentation is to trawl through all of the major studies that we could find uh, to produce a thought piece on the likely payback of social marketing to see how we can uh, all improve our social lives. Now, I realize that broadband penetration today is relatively low in India, but as you've seen, and I think you know, both the last speakers have really established that change will never be this slow again. And so I, I can guarantee you that social will become a really major phenomena in India very quickly. So I very much hope some of the lessons uh, in here are, are, are of interest to you. Um, Social media is getting an awful lot of attention around the world today, um, and it's not surprising because the amount of time on it is, is increasing dramatically. Uh, social media uh, is now more popular in terms of time spent than email. That's how rapidly it's become a huge uh, phenomenon. Um, so naturally, it's getting a great deal of attention uh, from clients uh, and media agencies and spend is significant. Um, in 2010, uh, spend on uh, social is forecast at $2.1 billion. By 2015, it's been forecast that that will be uh, in excess of $8 billion. So the kind of levels of growth that we're talking about here that are anticipated in social absolutely um, can't be uh, ignored. Um, so the crucial thing is, uh, how much should we be investing in social media? And that's what we're going to attempt to answer today. So first of all, let's just look at the broadest study that we can find. This is a uh, uh, Nielsen 2010 for, for major markets around the world. And it says that 5% of individuals' time is spent on social networks. Uh, and it suggests that uh, crudely, we should be spending 23% of our money online uh, and 5% on social media. Uh, but ask yourself, how many marketeers are actually doing that? How many marketeers are actually committing that level of their budgets to online and social? Not really that many. However, um, looking at that, there is clear evidence to support over-investing in social media and taking it even more seriously. Um, there is a, another major study, um, an Engagement D re DB report, uh, and this shows that well-managed companies take social media very seriously. Uh, and it demonstrates a clear correlation between sophistication in social media and good financial performance or strong financial performance from those companies. Uh, and this has looked at the uh, top 100 global brands, so companies like Starbucks, which actually came out number one in this survey, but also big companies like PepsiCo, McDonald's, GE, Dell, Mercedes... Uh, all of those came out very strongly. Uh, and this, what this study did was to divide them up into um, four groups. Uh, wallflowers, you know, companies that don't really do very much in social media, all the way across to mavens, who have made social uh, a really 
key component um, of their go-to-market strategy. Uh, they're active in very many channels. Um, they're driven by dedicated teams. They're assisted by company-wide awareness, support, and participation. So those are the ones that are most active. And the findings of this report I thought were fascinating. It found that companies with the deepest social media engagement grew revenue by 18% in 2010. Those that were least active dropped by 6%. So that's a, a, an enormous contrast. Now, that does not tell us that uh, being socially active leads to a disproportionate growth in revenue and profit. What it does tell us is that well-managed companies, successful companies, are investing heavily in social media. So that's a good piece of correlation. But what about causality? Um, well, one of the earliest studies by Comscore in 2009 suggested that social media um, significantly increases consideration. Uh, consumers exposed to influence social exhibited 223% uh, heavier search behavior. So that's pretty convincing. Uh, and more recently, Nielsen and Facebook uh, came together to do some research, which, look, which looked at 14 campaigns using Nielsen brand lift uh, methodology, focusing on brand performance, and they looked at the effects of becoming a fan, becoming a, a, a fan in social media. And it looks at a wide range of advertisers in FMCG, in entertainment, in retail, uh, and so on, across a, a wide spectrum. Um, and it found that although, um, sorry, I've gone just one too many. It found that although organic uh, and social only account for around about 10% of impressions in social media, they have a far greater influence and lead to up to three times the effect. So if you reweight that, earned media can account for 22% of the overall effect. So to put that another way, um, making all campaigns social can increase online ROI by 28%. Now, this is important as it provides a first stage quantitative base um, for making online campaigns socially enabled. And it demonstrates that making online activity socially active can genuinely increase ROI. So it's a very important study. So given that, unsurprisingly, we're seeing uh, in the developed world uh, a big increase in social media promotions. Uh, and here are a couple of uh, examples, a couple of relatively early examples. Um, the first one is Dell. Dell was one of the first companies, I think it was actually the first company, to use Twitter as a sales channel. Uh, and in between 2000 and 2000 and 2007 and 2009, uh, they achieved $3 million in sales through Twitter alone, uh, which you know, is, a, is a, a strong earlier example. More recently, Mazda has used Facebook in the UK to offer a 20% discount if customers checked in using Facebook, uh, which was uh, said to be extremely successful for them. But just as we get used to uh, check-in and group buying models, along come Twitter's uh, promoted trends and promoted tweets. And these are really becoming um, extremely influential. So here's a couple of examples of when this has been used. Um, Virgin America claimed to have been the first uh, advertiser to use promoted tweets, and they put out a discount promotional code. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, they enjoyed their fifth highest sales day ever, uh, and they claim to have generated $10 million worth of resulting earned media 